Sotaru Gojo, the strongest jujitsu sorcerer of the modern era and the self-proclaimed honored one. Buddha, the sixth representative of humanity or the honored one. With the return of not only Jujutsu Kaisen but Record of Ragnarok, with both characters making their timely debut, one was posed the question, who is truly the honored one? Now on to Gojo, something we need to discuss is that Gojo isn't beyond time. More specifically, he doesn't have an accessible or immeasurable speed. Now I know what you're thinking, yes of course he doesn't have an accessible speed. What are you talking about? Well at last there are people who do believe that he has these speeds. Said meta comes from due to Gojo moving in the prison realm, which all the statements of his stating that has no time, hence moving there would grant one such speeds. Now there are two main contentions with this argument which I'll be addressing right now. Now for this interpretation, we'll be accepting the notion that time simply is non-existent in the prison realm. So why does Gojo not quantify for these said higher speeds? This is due to the quantifications that is need to be met to even use the prison realm. The prison realm is stated for when one is in there, there's no natural escape with the, of course, obsession of specific items or abilities which are meant to negate jujitsu in general. And the only way to reuse the prison realm is if the already trapped combatant has died. But with the lack of time, one will not die to time-related deaths. So how is one able to reuse it, you might be asking? Well, this is brought up on many times actually, but the person was needs to kill themselves. Yes, meaning you are required to be able to move in this realm in the first place. And we actually do see that there are many skeletons in there from the deaths of previous prisoners, and this was even addressed inside the Jujutsu Kaisen files for the prison realm. With this being the case, it's quite prevalent that Gojo wasn't moving with pure speed, this was just a functionality of the prison realm. As assuming this was a speed, you'd be asserting that every character in Jujutsu Kaisen has those levels of speed, as anyone trapped in there would have the capability to kill themselves. Which would be blatant contradiction as there are specific levels of speeds that's been consistently shown and stated, and as well as there's a sense of time or urgency that applies to all characters including Gojo. And it's not like this is some unheard thing of inside Jujutsu Kaisen, as many Jujutsu don't initially scale to said user and are considered hexes, as well as the existence of binding vows that essentially make laws upon the user or items in conjunction with curtains as well. This is not only prevalent but also consistent that no one scales to the prison realm. And for the second interpretation, it's due to the fact that time may actually not exist in the prison realm. As it's stated that physical time doesn't exist there, but you have to remember, to have such high speeds that people claim that this feat gives, you can't just be beyond the physical interpretation of time, in the sense of how we determine time. You have to be beyond time in actuality, in the sense of being beyond the temporal notion of it. With chapter 221, this makes it more apparent that this is just the physical interpretation of time in which it lacks. As it's directly stated that Gojo is still experiences time just differently to our time, if anything this would just show that the prison realm is a separate time flow, in contrast to not having temporal time at all. As Gojo even notices that there was a flow of time did pass just differently, which is why he asks how much time has passed and the actual date in the real world. Now something we all know is that Gojo stands a pinnacle of all jujitsu, currently, and he would absolutely blitz the majority of the verse. Now something that is consistent both narratively and statement wise is that a majority of verse doesn't really get past supersonic plus speed categories. This is shown from Chozo's piercing blood just blatantly being stated by the narrator to travel at the speed of sound, with the Shibuya arc Yuji self admitting that he had a 50-50 chance of dodging it, even though he quite literally dodged it almost every time. To Neo and his human state being stated by the narrator to surpass subsonic speeds, which is consistent as he was able to dodge piercing blood pretty easily. To finally in his ventral sphere state, he was being shown by the narrator state that he reached Mach 3 or supersonic plus levels of speed. Now this doesn't cap Gojo at these speeds, as what I call true self Maki is effortlessly able to dodge Neiwa after achieving her true self. It was implied that the three of them were somewhat on the same levels, so if she or any of them would scale to Hakari's feat of dodging Kaishima's lightning boy at point blank ranges, which is capped upwards of Mach 4760, or massively hypersonic plus. Now for these god tiers this wouldn't be inconsistent as they would just blatantly be above the far consistent speed feats, as they would massively scale above the rest of the verse. But Gojo does have a higher end, 
This is due to Sukuna reacting to Gojo's Hollow Purple while off guard and unaware of its coming to the very last second. This is important as Hollow Purple is stated to be imaginary mass which in nature moves faster than light. This can be consistent as chapters before another god tier that being Kanjaku was also able to not only react but and stand inside Yuki's black hole which is standing inside a black hole you would need to be faster than light. This notion is even brought up inside the manga itself with Gojo casually scaling above him. Gojo would be hitting the faster than light's speeds at his peak. Gojo's overall attack potency is him purely scaling above Kenjaku. Kenjaku in chapter 208 was able to use his body as a domain to tank Yuki's black hole. Said black hole was stated if left uncontrolled it would have destroyed the whole world if not for Tengen's intervention. Now even if you think that Kenjaku doesn't scale to it, Tengen still does as he was able to restrict the black hole so it wouldn't destroy the world which in both cases Gojo massively scales above. This can be consistent as Sukuna is also someone who has been stated to have the power to destroy the world on the backside of every Jujutsu Kaisen volume. Now in Jujutsu Kaisen, when they use the term world, they are actually referring to the actual planet. As in Japanese, world can have many different meanings such as society, planet, or even universe. But in Jujutsu Kaisen, they actually refer to society as society and the only time they use the word world is in context to the actual planet so Gojo would be planetary. Now for the universal arguments that is made due to Sukuna potentially tanking Gojo's hollow purple. For why this is universal, this is due to the hollow purple completely blowing through the inventory curse, which inside the Jujutsu Kaisen file states that the inventory curse inside is a fourth dimensional space, making hollow purple universal plus. But most likely this isn't the case because as due to the manga pounds don't fully show the aftermath for the whole entire situation as it could be most likely that he just simply healed after being hit by it. As this is something Sukuna has shown to be a subconscious thing before so it wouldn't be too contradictory. And Gojo's abilities are surprisingly easy to understand, like I don't understand why everyone gets a migraine over trying to understand they're very blatant in what they do. Firstly, he has some basic durability negation via red as he can control it down to the atomic level. And with his 6 eyes, he not only has all of his cursed energy infinitesimally close to zero in usage wise, but along with that, he also has the ability to see the, and, and understand the fundamentality of one's cursed technique just by looking at them. But for his more fundamental abilities, such as blue, which is just an ability that is just an attraction force, such as a gravity pulse, and his red that deals with repulsive forces but is also incorporated with being two times stronger than his regular output. And of course he has his hollow purple but we've already gone over that. And for his most infamous ability he has the infinity barrier which allows him to put a seemingly infinite space between him and his opponent via as it functions similarity to the Achilles and the Taurus paradox which involves an infinite series of numbers and lastly immeasurable void. Which if caught in it, one would get multiple infinities worth of information directly into your brain. For an example of how this works, imagine you were received the word bat. You would first get an infinite amount of information of the letter B, then an infinite amount of information of the letter A, then T, and lastly you would receive an infinite amount of information about anything the concept of bat embodies. To understand Buddha's scaling, there's something you must understand. Buddha is stronger than Zeus. Due to him being equal if not greater than Hajun after he reattained his enlightenment, Hajun is not only stated by Hades to Zeus of all people that Hajun was a being that transcended all of the gods. Zeus is even shown to be visibly scared of Hajun and even regarded him as a supreme being. His feats are also similar to Zeus as at his fullest extent he was speculated to potentially be able to destroy all of heaven, but in his adamant state his body cannot take his own power for long periods of time. While you have a way weaker Hajun destroyed half of all of hell and his body could not take his power as well, and this was a casual weaker Hajun, something to know is that hell and heaven is shown to be equal in size. Even Buddha was confident in fighting Zeus even after witnessing his Adamus form. So where does Zeus scale? Zeus, regarded as the godfather of the cosmos, he was able to tank the Big Bang and saw it nothing more than amusing. The Big Bang being the force that created our universe, to even being stated that he can return anything he wishes to the void. A void can be considered an empty space. This could be implying that he could destroy the universe. This notion is confirmed while in the anime they explain it as, on a whim he created everything out of nothingness and he can return it all to nothingness if he so pleases. 
Both the manga and the anime statements can essentially mean the same thing, one is just more direct, hence I see no reason not to use either definition as they're not contradicting to each other at all, making base Zeus a universal. However, Adamus Zeus is a different story, as he threatened to destroy even heaven in said state. Heaven is stated to be a realm beyond time and space. It being beyond our physical three spatial dimensions would make the realm at least fourth dimensional realm or a universal plus construct. Hence, Zeus threatening to destroy it would make him universal plus. This isn't inconsistent either as you have Zeus already being able to tank or destroy or even create universes. Some even argue that the Big Bang is considered 4D whether it be due to space, time, or a potential it being the encompassing force of our physical universe. We even have Zeus piecing up the personification of time itself. So him being as complete strongest output being universal plus isn't that far-fetched and a consistent mid-ball. Speed is extremely easy as we just have Adam blatantly moving in stop time due to Zeus performing the fist that surpassed time. Now you can argue that this was just Zeus performing a time hacks rather than him just moving in with raw speed, which is completely fine, but this is not the case for Adam as his ability requires him to perceive the attack before he dodges and returns it. Meaning Adam could perceive and move in stop time granting him inaccessible speed and Zeus by proxy. But this can be considered measurable speed as this fist not only surpassed time, but the anime goes in more depth by explaining it also surpasses or defies all laws of time. This would be blatantly a measurable speed feat, which can be consistent as we have a younger, weaker Zeus literally beating the personification of time. A personification can be defined as something as an abstract or concept of said quality, which could mean that Zeus literally beat and then surpassed the concept of time, which would be consistent among Greek mythology, which said character takes inspiration from. But even if you think Buddha doesn't scale to or above Zeus, he still scales the Hajun, who was able to casually destroy half of a fourth dimensional construct, and Buddha himself can exist and move in heaven, which in itself is already beyond time, which can be argued at measurable speed. So whichever meta you use, Buddha ends up coming at universal plus with a measurable speed. And Buddha has a rather small but grand arsenal, as something that every contestant in regular Ragnarok has is existence erasure. This also includes the soul, as this point was directly brought up. Not to mention, all of the human contestants are literally just souls. So not only does Buddha have existence erasure, but also resistances to this as he doesn't instantly get negged by people just punching or erasing him. But for his more personal arsenal, he has the Six Realm Staff. He can get a different weapon dependent on his emotions that give him a variety of different occupations, such like a shield, many bladed weapons, as well as a weapon that supposedly has a one-shot technique to it, to even his great Nirvana Sword, Zero, which has the opposite effect to Zero Fukon's technique to grow more devastating and stronger based on the misery he has accumulated to now that he can grow in terms of compassion he has accumulated for one another. Mind you, he could somehow find compassion for Hajun, a being so vile that he essentially had no soul. On the topic of the soul, Buddha is essentially able to scare you so much to the point where you, if you have no soul, he will just essentially give you one purely based off his fear hacks. And lastly, his future vision. He's able to see into the future to dodge any of your attacks. This is done by him recognizing or seeing your will or soul. After thoroughly going over both respective parties, we can see in terms of the pure stats, Buddha is completely overwhelming Gojo. Even if you grant Gojo's higher AP scaling, Buddha has fought people who are transcendent of said levels of power. And I've already discussed why Gojo doesn't scale to any of the higher end speeds while Buddha just blatantly does. So their abilities are basically a non-factor as Buddha can just blatantly tank them or even outspeed in one shot Satoru Gojo. Overall, the self-proclaimed honored one gets humbled by the actual honored one in the flesh.